Hey everybody, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my Bioptron Mac 150. I bought this for plants, for planetary use, and um, I'm going to show you why I, I needed to get some rings for it, because, I'll explain to you why now, I'm going to hold this up. This Vixen bar is held by two tiny little screws that are bolted right through the case, and they're like tiny screws, okay? So when I was touching the focuser, this it's just wobbling back and forth. Now the weight of this telescope is in and around 22 pounds. Add some gear in the back and you're probably like 25 pounds. It doesn't look large, but it is heavy. So in order to counteract that, I was looking all over the internet for rings. Now they sell these little metal skinny guys, and that's fine. Um, I think Orion sells rings for these, but I found a company in Vancouver called Rouse Astro, and uh, they have uh, all kinds of all kinds of extra accessories you can use for your telescopes. And so I contacted them, and they uh, they they have uh, they had rings, carbon fiber rings. Okay, so I ordered the carbon fiber rings to put on here, and then the second reason I wanted the rings is because where do you where do you mount a finder, like a finder scope. If you look at here, I'm going to show her now. We show her here, and if you put your scope here and you go to balance it, the tube wants to fall to one side. So the whole point of all this was to try to get the rings installed and then put the guider on top so that I can do two things. First, you're going to get away from this problem, and the second is you can move it back and forth like everybody else does, so we can put some weight to the back, believe it or not, unlike a C8. The meniscus on this thing is weighs a ton, and uh, I'm always, always, always nose heavy. So let's see what we got. I ordered two rings, two Vixen rails, two riser blocks, which I'll explain why in a minute, and a guiding clamp. You'll see that, and a bunch of Allen uh, bolts, and the whole thing is carbon. The whole setup here is carbon fiber. So let's have a look. It's, it was really nice online, and so let's see what we have in real time, in real life. So it came from Vancouver. Rouse Astro Astronomy Products Accessories. Oh, that's that's nice. Just put the razor blade down from there. So here we go. Nice. We have it in the foam. Here it is. RouseAstro.com. We'll have to open that up. It's well packed. It's very important to have everything packed properly. I'm going to put these underneath as I go along here. So here's the first ring. top bar, bottom bar, and let's open it up. Now you're going to notice there's no slot here. Like most clamping system has a slot that you can flip that up and down. They don't, they didn't do that. It's very interesting. And I know why, because you can actually move this back and forth to do your alignment. So I'm just going to unscrew this in. Boy, they give you a lot of room. If your ring is not exactly 177 millimeters, you can come out a long way, and I, I really appreciate that. So, just screw back down again, because I know it's going to fall in a minute. Okay, so there you go. And felt. They had to do the felt on the carbon fiber ring. Okay, so that's one. Notice what I said? You can move this back and forth, so that you go in. Let's put that down. Let's open the second one. I want this video to be one hour, so we're going to cruise along pretty quick here. Second ring. Right down there. What else do we have? Guess I'll take stuff out of the box, and then we'll show you what's inside. Two, three, four, five. In the box. Okay, so again, more foam. Wrapping. Nice orange elastic band. Let's have a look, see what we have under here. I like the wrapping, it's pretty thick. And here's the first carbon fiber dovetail. Oh, there's a little message. Please use washers for bolts on carbon dovetail. Okay, all right, get to that in a minute. This must be the top or the bottom because I believe they're interchangeable. I asked her, they actually asked me what length I wanted. I, I actually specified the rings, they have all kinds of sizes, but when I said I have a six-inch Mac by Optron, 
he, he made Rouse maybe measure the, the diameter, which I can't remember what it is now, 23 and a half inches or 21 and a half inches. And so they pre-cut them, kind of a special order, to the size that you want, and they put the, the, the felt lining in. So I, it was actually, this is all, this section looks like it was done for me. And then I asked for the top and bottom bar, and um, I got these, and we already talked about why later. And light duty carbon dovetail, not to carry the telescope. So don't, don't grab this and lift a 40 pound telescope. It's not made for that. Uh, but being the way it's gonna be, it'll be easier to pick up anyways. All right, so we have this, this, and this. What else, let's move that. Oh, look at this. Let's look at this for a minute. Very nice. Very nice. Our clamping system for our, <clears throat> our um, finder scope. So this will be interesting. Complete carbon fiber. You put your uh, guider in here. Lock it down. Perfection. So you got here now. Well packed. Ah yes, my riser blocks. We'll talk about that. Why did I get the blocks for it? Look. I should put some screws in here, I believe. So these are probably the bolts for the riser blocks. Okay, there we go. Get rid of this. Bag, okay. Um, yeah, so why these? Well, the scope, I'm not taking this off, okay? I have to go above and beyond it. And so with the riser blocks, we're gonna clear the board, all right? Okay, so unboxing is unboxed. Let's get started. Let's get, we'll remove this. By the way, this here is a stopper in case you're up in the sky and you don't want to drop your... Oh, this is the guider doesn't decide to slide off. And uh, we're going to start with the bottom, which is where the risers are going to go. Okay. So with these ones first. I don't think there's a particular way to put them on. And I'm not... I'm going to do this. I'm going to need some hands. But let's see if I can do it by myself. I think it's a number four. Yep, try to find the hole. Should be interesting. I've been known to do that. These Allen wrenches have the round end and they are really, really difficult to, to deal with. I, want, I wanted to get the ones with a handle. Let's see how close we can get the other one. Press over here. We can pause and come back at the end. Okay. There we go. Don't start here. Don't over tighten these. I, I wouldn't over tighten those. I don't think there's a need to over tighten them. Just gonna double check. Oh, yeah, that's good. Now we're good. Now we're gonna flip it. Okay, let's remove, um, let's remove these guys. We'll try not to lose the washers. So I took all, I took the screws out already on the top and we're gonna install this. Now, I'm not sure if you, like this bolt, if the telescope's like this, that would protect the fallout. So I'm gonna assume that these here are pointing towards the north, for now. If it's not, I can change it. So let's, um, let's get this in here and drop these in. I think, uh, by the way, this is an M4 metric. This is an M5 metric, which is good. Okay. 
need to get this started. Don't go too far. I'm going to start the other end now. Crisscross. Okay, so I've tightened up the Allen bolts. Bottom. Just I just double checked them. Now the time has come to test if the riser are going to clear the bottom bar because to in order to, if you want if I wanted to take off this this Vixen bar, the telescope meniscus and the primary mirror has to come off, and there's no way I'm dealing with that. At the moment, I'm working on um, collimation, so I'm hoping that all this will work very good. This weighs nothing, by the way. Maybe a pound. The metal ones were like well, four pounds, not including the steel bar and, uh, and the top and bottom. Even though they're aluminum, it's still fairly heavy. Okay, so we left this like that. And now, a moment of truth. Like I said, 20, 22 and a half pounds, maybe. I'm going to push it forward a bit, and I'll, she'll, she'll see it in a minute, because when I lift up, she'll be able to see underneath. Just like this. Okay. See the clearance I gave it there? The bar is not actually hitting the, the fi carbon fiber. All right. I'm going to hold it because it's really tippy. So I'm going to tighten these bolts in. All right, so I'm almost done tightening these guys. Again, no sense in over tightening because it is really gripping. Okay, so I'm on a piece of cloth here, so you don't want to let go of it. So now we're going to insert the guider plate. Onto the scope, Mike. Oh, by the way, let me take it off. You see how this is spring loaded with the center bar? You kind of want that because it's always pushing it out so you can slide it in nicely. Stop about here. I'll adjust it in a minute because I, I have to line the, the, the back of my uh, ZWO guider. I want the uh, the camera to be about here, maybe even a little bit further back, so the, the camera cable clears to go into the 533. All right, so almost good there. I'll give my camera woman to pass me the guider. Okay. I'm gonna pretty well center that. I'm not going to over tighten because you don't have to. This thing, this thing weighs nothing. Will you have to? Okay, so like I was saying, um, there's a, my, when the cable comes out here, I wanted this to like clear this. So if I want to, I could just back this up anytime I want. And I might end up having to, having to, there we go, that's good. So this alignment now clears the tube and it can go around and plug into the camera. Don't need to over tighten that. And now that's complete, complete setup. Is it lighter? No, but boy, is it easier to pick up. I was having a hard time getting this off the shelf in the observatory, but now, again, we don't want to grab this as a handle, but we can always you know, put our hand here now and just pick up the tube and walk away with it. Okay, in a few minutes, we're gonna mount it on the AVX. So we've, in we've installed the rings, got the guider on, and in a moment, we're walking over to the AVX. So um, hopefully it'll run into my friend here, partner. Up we go. A lot better to carry, a lot better, easier to work. And I'll uh, explain something in a minute. And I put this in the cradle. Okay, so as you can see, the red dot, that, that wasn't put by the factory. I just put that there a moment ago because I balanced it on the table. I found the uh, teetering point of the entire telescope and it teetered right here without falling forward or without falling backward. And that's really important. I do that to all my scopes. Okay, so now the moment of truth. Let me skip by. Normally, when I loosen this 
deck clutch. This thing falls that way. So first I'm gonna to go to the, to the right. Then I'm gonna to go to the left. Oh, I just noticed something. My bottom bar, Dixon bar is off, so I didn't realize, I didn't, I didn't notice that this here is like that. It's supposed to be directly below, and it's not. It's, here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Look what's happening here. Gotcha. Yeah. So by loosening, yeah. So by loosening these, we can rotate. I'm not going to do it now. That wasn't really the point. So we're going to leave that there. We're going to loosen the right ascension now. And uh, see what we got. This is why I got the carbon fiber clamps from uh, Rouse Astro Astronomy Solutions in Vancouver, by the way. So I'll put a link down below in the uh, description. And let's try the other side. There. Wow, what a difference. Now, it was, there was a there was um, a bit of a question whether this would cause problems. And if I can put this in a way she can see it. No. Okay, anyway. The focus here, right? This 10, really sensitive by the way. This is fairly heavy as a unit. It's always on one side. And I was thinking, well, with the, to then the telescope, I thought, well, if I loosen the deck, if I loosen the deck, this side's heavy, then this would want to fall. But it doesn't, it holds. If it had of, and I might still do it, um, Rouse Astro has a clamping system that goes here. There's a bar that comes out, and there's counterweights. You can slide them in and out. That would rebalance, of course, if the weight problem is on this side. I would put the bar sticking up this way and lock it down. So they have all kinds of accessories, and everything that I've got from them was carbon fiber, so it's going to last forever. It's never going to rust. It light, so light, doesn't weigh anything at all. And uh, it's premium equipment, so keep that in mind. So you want the best of the best of the best. This is it.